Do you know that a trillion dollar killing army is stationed within us? This year's Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine has found its truce button. The soldiers of this army are forged into an army with immune T-cells in the highest military academy called the Thymus. In 1960, Nobel laureates Bonnet and Medavo initially described what they called central tolerance, a cold, brutal cleansing. Any rookie who dared show the slightest threat to the self would be immediately executed. Yet outside the academy, this war was far more complicated. Doctors found this strictly selected army sometimes still rebel, attacking its own organs, triggering autoimmune diseases. Sometimes it showed mercy where it shouldn't, letting cancer cells grow unchecked. Obviously, the loyalty education in this military school is not enough. In the periphery, some unseen strategist must be pulling the strings. In the 1970s, Richard Gishon caught a glimpse. He proposed an attractive concept, suppressor T-cells. They guessed that this special type of T-cell is not to fight, but to break up conflicts. For a time, it was the hottest chase in the immunology community. However, with the advancement of molecular biology techniques, this carnival ended in an academic scandal in the 1980s. No one could find their so-called gene. The IJ code didn't exist. Inhibition has since become a forbidden zone that no one dared to step into. But right on the ruins of this theory, one man kept watch from Japan. Shimon Sakaguchi refused to give up. He believed the peacemaker was real. Sakaguchi's obsession originated from an earlier and contradictory experiment. In 1969, Yasuaki Nishizuka discovered that if the thymus of a newborn mouse was removed, it would not have as low immunity as expected. Instead, a frenzied autoimmune disease would break out, as if the thymus were not only trained killers, but also sent out a special police force to keep them in check. Once missed the dispatch window, the kingdom's army would fall. That idea pierced Sakaguchi's mind. In 1977, he dropped out of Kyoto University and joined Nishizuka's lab as an unpaid student, all for the sake of pursuing the mechanism behind that phenomenon. In that era of scarce technology, this was no different from identifying a person without a face in a sea of people. In 1982, he used the crude antibodies of that time. He roughly defined a group of cells to prove that they could suppress autoimmunity, but this paper caused no waves. To prevent the seed of his research from being destroyed, he went to the United States, only to find himself in a research winter. Most immunologists regarded suppressor T cells as a joke, and his research was ignored, but he did not give up. Like a solitary craftsman, he polishes his tools and methods day after day. Then, in 1995, the opportunity finally came. After countless failed screenshots, Sakaguchi found a key marker, CD25. It proved that if only 10% of CD25 positive T cells, mice erupted in total immune war, autoimmune disease. But if these 10% of cells are replenished in time, everything will return to calm. That tiny 10% actually held the key to keeping calm. This is the first time that someone has provided a conclusive and firm proof for this peacekeeping force. Sakaguchi named them regulatory T-cells so that it can draw a clear line between them and the notorious suppressor T-cells, even Ethan Shevak, once the top skeptic and a significant figure in the field of immunology in the United States, became Sakaguchi's supporter after sending people to repeat the experiment and confirm the results. Still, critics doubted. CD25 is also a symbol of activated T cells. Critics believe that this is merely giving an old theory a new disguise. The world is still waiting for the final code of peace. The genetic answer has quietly been played out on the other side of the ocean. Mary Brunkow and Fred Ramsdell were investigating an unlucky mouse named Scurfy. Its male offspring were born with a fatal autoimmune disease. Geneticists have long known that. The disease-causing gene is hidden on the X chromosome, but no one has been able to find it for decades. Brunkow and Ramsdell realized, if they could find this cursed gene, they'd find the master switch of the immune system's civil war. In the 1990s, genome sequencing was still a fantasy. It was like looking for a wrong punctuation in an encyclopedia. 
They used position cloning to expand the search range from the vast X chromosome down to an area of 500,000 base pairs. After checking 19 candidate genes without any results, when they analyzed the 20th and last gene, they finally found the poison needle. A frame-off mutation caused the entire gene sentence to be unreadable, forcing them to terminate it prematurely. They named this gene that determines the peace or war of the immune system FOXP3. Almost simultaneously, clinicians discovered a rare human disease, IPEX syndrome. Boys died within months due to severe autoimmunity. <laughs> Two groups of scientists worked together and eventually confirmed that it was the human version of the FOXP3 gene. The news came Sakaguchi's lab. They immediately took action. After testing, they found that FOXP3 was the soul of regulatory T cells, the master that determines their identity and fate. Once a T cell expresses FOXP3, it is as if it has been granted a blue beret by the peacekeeping force, and it will devote its entire life to quelling the war. The mystery was finally solved. Both the scurfy mice and IPEX patients suffered the same fate. Their charter of peace, FOXP3, was broken. The FOXP3 gene prevented them from generating a functioning peacekeeping force. Without this curse, the patriotic enthusiasm of the immune army turned into tears. This year's Nobel Prize was awarded to these three scientists. It honored not just persistence, but a revolution in how we understand immunity. We once thought that the essence of immunity was to distinguish between friend and foe, but regulatory T-cells pointed out that it is more like a diplomat. The first task of immunity is not to fight, but to manage peace. It negotiates with gut microbes. It protects unborn children. It knows when, where, and to whom to declare immunity. We once searched for a sharper sword, but the secret to the prosperity of life is knowing when to lay down the sword. True strength does not lie in having thicker walls, but in having higher bargaining chips. Similarly, true self is not about rejecting others. Rather, it has the ability to allow others to participate in the formation of the self at a moderate distance. 